All right, so this lecture we're going to talk about object-oriented programming. I think the easiest way to start here is with an example. Objects are defined by classes, or specifically they are hard instantiations of a class. We'll talk about what that means in just a second. But if we start with this code, in Python uh, you'll start a class with the keyword class. Just like functions or if statements or whatever, white space is syntax. So Anything that's spaced over inside the function is part of that function. What we have here is a special function called init. This is run upon instantiation of the class. Again, we'll talk about what instantiation means momentarily. But basically, it's run automatically when we create the class, uh, when we create an object from the class. And there's another special function called string, and this is just a special function that gets called whenever we call the print statement on an object. So again, uh, I think the easiest way to see this is with an example. So what we'll do is just have an example where we instantiate the object. So basically we are gonna create a variable called s that is gonna store the object. The object has data. In this case, it just has one piece of data that is shape, and it also has functions defined on it. So if we call what the attribute is, shape, in this case, it just returns the string shape, we'll get to something more interesting momentarily. But shape is an attribute, is said to be an attribute of the object S in this case. S is just a single instantiation of the class and we can have multiple instantiations. For example, we could also have another object SS. Right? And if we call the print function on any of these objects, this special function string is going to be run. And in this case, it's just going to return the string. I am a shape. And there we, that's what we have. Same thing if we were to call this on the other object SS. There's no difference between the two objects at this point. So here's where object oriented program becomes interesting. What we can do is we can derive a class from shape. For example, we could have a class called Polygon. So here's an example of a class called Polygon. The fact that we have shape as sort of an argument to the class definition tells us that Polygon inherits from shape. Another way you can think of that is that Polygon is a shape. In this case, we also have an init statement and we define the two class attributes in this case, shape, which we'll just set to polygon, and another attribute called side links, which as of right now will be set to none. There's a couple of functions here, compute parameter, which is the sum of side links, and get number of edges, which is the total number of side links. One thing that's not defined here is the string function. But because Polygon inherits from shape, it also inherits any function definitions of shape that are not overridden. So in this case, the init, the init function appears in both class definitions. And so Polygon will use the one that's here. It overrides the one in shape. But the string function, since it's not implemented, is not overridden and therefore will be called um, from the original shape function. So again, let's look at an example. So we've instantiated the class, set it to a, which creates an object that is assigned the to the variable P, and we can call the print statement on P. And even though it's not defined here, it calls the string function from shape and but then applies the current attribute, self.shape, which we set to polygon. Uh, it is set there so that we now have uh, the correct print statement here. Now we can go on and derive further classes from polygon. For example, we could define a class rectangle. Again, rectangle inherits from polygon or Rectangle is a polygon, which again is a shape. And now you'll see we 
have a class init statement here that gives us, um, again, the shape is rectangle. And in this case, now it gives us four sides, this, the length of the sides, which we set uh, automatically to one, 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 one. Now here's where things get interesting because I do not need to rewrite compute perimeter or get number of edges because those are inherited from polygon. So all we have to do is instantiate our rectangle and we can, of course, print. It says I am a rectangle. That's inherited all the way back from shape. We can also call the function compute perimeter. And in this case, uh, it just sums the lengths of the sides. We can also call, you know, get number of edges. And again, uh, it is four. We could instantiate another rectangle. Um, we'll, we'll call this one large rectangle. And this time, what we're going to do to large rectangle is, even though the default is to set the side links to one, 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 we can access them as an attribute like this. I misspelling there. And we can actually then reassign that to whatever we want. I called it large rectangle. Um, because we're gonna make it you know, something larger. And then we can call compute perimeter on it. And with the new side links, we can see that the perimeter is larger. We can likewise define a class triangle, which has the attribute shape triangle and side links two, two, two. Instantiating this class and calling compute perimeter on it. Gives us something like that. So the advantage of this is that we have two classes, uh, triangle and rectangle that both inherit from polygon and therefore both reuse the compute perimeter and get number of edges function, as well as the string function all the way back from shape. So using this class inheritance, we have a class that has multiple functionality, but we don't have to implement it all every time for rectangle, for triangle. We can borrow code uh, from the class that inherits from, in this case, polygon. It turns out that everything in Python that we've used so far is actually implemented as a class, including the, the common lists that we've been using. So we know we have a list like this, and now it probably makes more sense uh, how, we op how the sort function operates because uh, list is an object, specifically it's an instantiation of the class list, and then we can, it has data, with the data is um, one, two, three, four in this case, and well, let, let's put it out of order. One, let's say one, four, three. And then if we call sort on it, um, it the sort function is a member function of the class uh, and it manipulates the data, in this case, in place. And so there we see one, three, four. So anytime you see this kind of dot and a function call, uh, it should be really clear now that, that what uh, it's calling the function on is the data of the instantiated class, in this case, list. We can have classes that um, have different behavior or can be instantiated with arguments, just like regular functions. So in this case, our class, we have a different class now that doesn't inherit from anything. It's called car. But when we instantiate this class, we have to instantiate it or we will instantiate it with number of doors. If we set the number of doors equal to, uh, you know, two or something, uh, they're automatically assigned to a class attribute. And then we've defined the string function, which basically says, if the number of doors is two, I am a coupe. If the number of doors is four, I am a sedan. And if the number of doors is something else, then it says, I don't know what type of car I am. So let's just go ahead and, um, you know, we can instantiate this uh, as an object we'll call coupe. And we can instantiate it with number of doors uh, equal to two. And, and then if we call the print 
a statement on coupe, we get I am a coupe, or we can have another car that is instantiated with number of doors equal to four. And if we were to print it, it says I am a sedan. So there you can see that the behavior of the, the class itself has been changed based on the way it was instantiated. And just as a final example, we can also have, uh, you know, if we, if we set it to something other than two, and then call print on it. it, says, I don't know what kind of car I am. So these are just a couple of examples. Again, key things to remember, the init statement gets run automatically. Uh, the special string function is what gets called when you call the print on the instantiation of the object. The inst instantiation of the object is, is what occurs when you create the object by um, calling the class constructor, as we have here. And in this case, the object is coop, but it's just assign or assigned to a variable coop. But we know it's an object because um, we know it has this special behavior. It has attributes. and it has functions defined on it.